So yeah, it's great to see and be here. And uh, uh, of course, as John Medved said, we are very pleased to have uh, our crowd as our investors, as well as Jerusalem Venture Partners and General Electric and many other really great investors. Um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about data, money, and everything uh, in between. And if we'll have time, maybe I will teach you how to steal money so you can have more money to invest if you like. Are you interested? No, don't do it. Um, so uh, first of all, about data, uh, we all know the problem. By 2020, there will be about three devices for each person on Earth. It's a huge amount of uh, data. And we also know that every two days, every two days, we create more data that was created from the beginning of the life on Earth till 2003. Think about it. And by the way, just to understand the numbers, 26 billion objects will be connected by 2020. And if we talk about banks, they have even more data because they collect everything about what you do. They collect everything about where you do it from, what you buy. But they also have what they call KYC data. They have the right to ask you even more difficult questions and you have to answer. Otherwise, they will not open an account to you. And still, in spite of the fact that they have all this data and the technology, it looks like the amount of money they're losing now is more and more. And it's not only losing money, it's money laundry, CEOs of banks being fired, Danske Bank CEO was fired, um, ING CFO was fired, Go um, Goldman Sachs, people will go to jail, HSBC was paid a $2 billion fine, Deutsche Bank probably will pay more. And the question is, how can it be? With all this data, all the access, all the machines, all the technology, it looks like banks are losing more money and more money being laundered. And the answer is very simple. The world of financial crime, as we know, it has totally been changed in the last five years. Today, if you think about it, nobody will come to a branch of a bank and try to shoot in there to steal some money. By the way, when I say nobody, it still happens in Hollywood movies. Uh, but in reality, you put a server somewhere in a remote country, the server will steal maybe 20 cents from your bank account. Nobody complains. Even if you know that something's suspicious, you will not complain for 20 cents, especially if I call it something like App Store transaction. Um, governments do it. North Korea <coughs> finance, people say, 25% of its activity by stealing money from banks all around the world. It was published that they stole $81 million from Bank of Bangladesh through SWIFT network. Um, it, the numbers, nobody knows the exact numbers, but uh, Interpol thinks that over $16 billion have been stolen in 2017, and the 2018 numbers will come. And by the way, when money is stolen, it's bad. But sometimes money is used to launder, to do money laundry. And then it's really terrible because money laundry today is not about tax evasion. It's about narco traffic. It's about terrorist funding. It's about human trafficking, sex slavery. It's all now money laundering. And the numbers here, according to uh, World, uh, 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 Global uh, uh, World Forum, is between 3 to 5% of the global GDP, which is between 2 to $4 trillion. Now, it's not only about banks. I will focus in this presentation about banks, but it's not only about banks. If you think about it, all the organizations in the world, the large organizations, enterprises, suffer from the same problem. They have to be global and open. People will not open an account in a bank if you can't do online transactions. You will not go to a branch. Uh, the data is there, but it's very complex. Uh, bad guys become smarter and smarter, so they have artificial intelligence. They have all the technologies they want and uh, organizations go through this type of transformation. They have to be connected, and they have to reduce the costs. Sounds like an impossible challenge, uh, but that's what's happening. If we zoom into financial institutions, there are different types of crimes that are a result of this uh, situation, whether it's cryptocurrency crime, money laundry, fraud, etc. And before I will tell you what the solution is, I will just say that existing systems, unfortunately, do not work anymore. Because most of the systems today are based on rules, thresholds, signatures, models, things that we learned from past. But the world of crime has changed. Now, everybody now says that they're an artificial intelligence company. By the way, we are also an artificial intelligence company. 
uh, very different one. I will tell you the difference. But the point is that many cases when people say AI, it's basically machine learning, it's automation. Uh, think about neural networks. You take the best neural network in the world, you show it one million pictures of a butterfly, it will identify all the butterflies in the world. It's great. But show it a scorpion, or show it black swan, or show it a snake, it will miss it because nobody taught the system how snakes look like. Now, when banks try to use this type of solutions, it doesn't work because they can, cannot miss a snake. It can be money laundry and then CEO will be fired or they will get huge fine. So basically they do what they call anomaly detection. Tell me everything that doesn't look like a, a butterfly. And then you get a huge number of false alarms. I don't know if you, it happened to you when you travel and suddenly your credit card doesn't work and you get this SMS from a bank, is it really you? Did it happen to you? Yeah, of course. This is false alarm. Today, the level of false alarms is for every true alert, there are 200 false alerts. And if the banks have managed to write rules and teach the system how to deal with crime, it's not valid after a week because the pace of change is so fast and bad guys are so creative that they immediately change the system. So we developed a totally different solution uh, based uh, on research done by, two, done by two of our founders, Professor Koifman from Yale, 20 years on the advisory board of DARPA uh, in the United States, uh, recipient of Golden Medal of Science by President Clinton, and Professor Averbuch, who spent 10 years in T.G. Watson Center of Excellence of IBM building those Watson machines. Basically, we build a system that thinks more like a human intuition, uh, like the human common sense. It digests all the data that exists in a bank, and without really trying to understand the data, it identifies crime very fast and presents it to customers in a way that is very intuitive to them. And maybe one word about intuitive AI, because you know, many companies try to research artificial intelligence, but they more, almost all of them deal with what you call um, cognitive AI. You, you know, our brain is built of cortex, which is like a small part of our brain, where all the analytics, and the subconscious, where all the magic happens the intuition, common sense, gut feelings, attraction, we deal with, with subconscious. And the way our system works is by connecting the dots, not trying to understand each and every value. As far as I know, we're one of the very small number of companies that managed to uh, make intuitive AI work, and that's why the largest banks in the world, whether it's Citibank, Santander, ABN AMRO, uh, obviously Chinese Bank, etc., decide to buy these solutions from us and not from huge companies like IBM. So just a few examples, anti-money laundry. We managed to find a network of tens of thousands of people financing ISIS by transferring very small amounts. For years, our system got it immediately, and we reduced the level of false alarms from 120,000 to 4,000, or even less. And by the way, when we discover attacks, we do it not only with very high level of precision, but usually we identify attacks 70 days before the actual attempt to take money out of the bank and conduct a crime happens. Almost like minority report. Uh, no, that's not really what we do. ATMs, I guess you know that ATMs are connected to the internet. So it's actually an IoT device, we discussed it. And if it's connected to the internet, it means that you can hack into the ATM from the internet. By the way, you would like to take notes because now we'll teach you how to steal money from the ATMs. I hope we have time. And you hack into the ATM, you take over the computer, and then you put a server somewhere in a remote place. Every time you push a button, money comes out of the ATM. Sounds like science fiction. It's not. Over one billion US dollars was stolen this way from hundreds of banks in Europe, in 14 countries. They literally shut down the camera, erased all the traces. All they needed is money mules that will come in the middle of the night and take the money. Never stole more than five notes from the ATM. Usually there are 10,000 notes. We are the only company, as far as I know, that can catch it. So just to summarize, our technology uh, is on average allows us to find between three to six times more issues, more attacks than existing organ systems, but we do it with level of false alarms that is usually 100 times lower than existing systems. So we save a lot of time. And maybe just before I finish, many people ask me, is it dangerous now? It's not enough that we have AI. Now you give AI treats like humans. We, suddenly our machines have intuition, common sense, attraction, etc. Is it dangerous? You know, Elon Musk said that AI will break the world. So my view is not. My view is very different. 
because every new invention caused some fears. You know, when press was invented, people say, that's it, that's the end of the memory. People don't need to remember anything, we can print books. When telephone was invented, people said, that's it, we will not visit each other because we can make a phone call. When cars were invented, people said, that's the end of the family unit because we'll go to a different city and who knows who will find them. And when internet was invented, I built the first internet service provider in Israel. Everybody said it will change the way we communicate with each other. And by the way, it is true. Sometimes there is some truth to that. But there are so many good things that are happening because of innovation. And also we should remember that bad guys have all the artificial intelligence they want. And they will use it against us. So I think that as humans, we have an obligation to take AI, to train it, to become our digital guards, and to make us, to make this a world of machines, connected machines, uh, safer. I have to say that the company is growing extremely fast, having the largest customers doubling itself, raising a lot of money. But it's also a great pleasure to work in a company that every day makes the world a much, much safer place. Thank you very much.